Good evening, visitors. Welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post ceremony. My name is Craig Burrell, and joining us today from the Royal Australian Air Force is Squadron Leader Murray Simons. We warmly welcome the family of Private Clyde Eugene Rowell, whose story will be told shortly. We welcome the veterans who have served, those that are still serving, and the families that love and support them. We acknowledge the members of RSL and Services Clubs Association, RSL Victoria and RSL Queensland who are watching the broadcast of this ceremony across Australia. During this evening's ceremony, wreaths will be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection by family and visitors to the memorial. If you're able, please stand and join in singing the national anthem. Please be seated if you can do so. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's first World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through to the end of the war. The idea of this national memorial and museum came to him at Pozieres, France, in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families and friends could mourn their loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that could help all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision, to which we remain true, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit in the hearts of the land they loved, and here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight, we will read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists the names of more than 102,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and on operations for more than a century. But first, we present a lament, Flowers of the Forest. Wreaths or floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection.
Today, we remember and pay tribute to Private Clyde Eugene Rowell. Clyde Rowell was born on the 28th of October, 1898, in Launceston, Tasmania. One of six children born to William and Emily Rowell. Clyde received his education at Wellington Square School and Lancaster State High School. He enjoyed playing cricket and was involved in the Tamar Rowing Club. He also served in the senior cadets and the militia. Before enlisting, Clyde was working as a clerk in the office of Mount Bischoff Smelting Works in Waratah. Clyde Rowell enlisted in the Australian Imperial Force on the 2nd of February 1917. He had previously been rejected for active service owing to his chest measurement. Being 18 years old at the time, he still required his parents' consent to volunteer. He was assigned to the 4th Machine Gun Company and began a period of training first in Tasmania and later in Victoria. During his training, he was appointed acting corporal, which was his rank when he embarked from Melbourne on board the troop ship Nestor in November 1917. Roll reached Egypt in December 1917, but did not stay there long. In January 1918, he was sent to England to continue his training. The following month, he was admitted to hospital having contracted measles. In England, he reverted to the rank of private and was transferred to the 12th Infantry Battalion. Private Roll joined his new unit on the Western Front at the end of April 1918, while his battalion was fighting to halt the German Spring Offensive. In June, he was once more admitted to hospital, this time with influenza. He remained in hospital for a week and later rejoined his unit at the end of the month. In August 1918, Rowell's unit was serving on the front lines around Morkor and he wrote a letter to his parents describing his experiences. There has been some very hard fighting and several of our mates have paid the highest price a man can pay. I have seen some horrible sights, but it is better that we should not talk about them, or the hardships that we go through over here. We must all have patience and trust it will soon end with complete victory for us. There is still hard fighting to do. We have a cruel and relentless enemy. I've talked to German prisoners of whom over 300 were captured by us near Belgium. One fairly old chap said, what for you kill me or me kill you? And I think he was quite pleased at being captured. I've had a wonderful look around London and other places, but there is one place dearer than all, which I hope to return to shortly, and that is home. Don't be surprised to see us all home very soon. 19 days after writing this letter, Private Rowell was killed in action. His unit was a reserve waiting in a gully for their turn to advance when the enemy began shelling their lines. His comrade, Private Jack Fahey, wrote to Rowell's parents. On the morning of August 23rd, we were moving up from reserves into the front line and suddenly came under very hostile enemy fire. Clyde, along with some others, was sheltering under a low bank when a shell burst right on top of them. Everyone in the company was very sorry to lose Clyde. He was a general favorite and had proved himself a fighter of sterling qualities. His family later posted a notice to Clyde in the newspaper which read, was not life, but boyhood dreams that he gave to keep Australia free. Private Clyde Roll was just 19 years old. His name is listed on the Roll of Honour to my right, amongst 62,000 Australians who died while serving in the First World War. 
This is one of the many stories of service and sacrifice told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Private Clyde Eugene Rowell, who gave his life for us, for our freedoms, and for the hope of a better world. Please stand for the ode and the sounding of the last post. They shall grow old as we who are left grow old. Age shall not worry them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Lest we forget. We leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many men lying out there at Pozier or in the low scrub at Gallipoli with his poor, tired senses barely working through the fever of his brain has thought in his last moments, well, well, it's over. But in Australia, they will be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the last post ceremony. On behalf of the director and staff, we thank you for visiting the Australian War Memorial today and for your continued support during the Memorial's development project. We wish you all a very pleasant evening. <laughs>